Hello friends, welcome to Swisspedia, Current Affairs Digital Library. So today we are going to see five topics. So National Testing Agency, Excise Rahat and National Minorities Development and Finance Corporation, Motor Vehicle Amendment Bill 2017 in the prelims perspective. And based on the editorial perspective, we are going to see India and tourism. Okay, now let's move on to our first topic. National Testing Agency. So why it is in news? The National Testing Agency, which is the premier testing institute in India, is responsible for conducting competitive exams. Okay, it is held to be responsible for conducting competitive exams. So that has created two new measures to increase the capacity of aspirants in computer-based examinations. So first one is about mobile applications. So mobile application, it is for providing the rural aspirants to get mock tests and other test practices in the mobile as applications so that the divide between urban and rural area aspirants will be bridged. Okay, the next one is promoting at least 4,000 test practice centers. So it is acted as a network so that the testing capability can be increased for the aspirants. Okay. Now, so what is this national testing agency? So national testing agency is actually a, a premier specialist and autonomous organization. Okay. It is for conducting online examinations for the aspirants both in entrance examinations as well as competitive exams examinations so what they have feel is they have to address all the issues faced in this testing examinations and other entrance examination providing all the best state of art technology in all the fields okay that is the motto of this national testing agency so what is their vision so vision is like they have to put up the right candidates into the perfect institutions so that the demographic dividend can be reaped as a fruitful measure okay that is their vision now, what are all the objectives? The first one is they have to conduct the most efficient and transparent examinations which are on par with the international standards. So that is their first objective. And then they have to have research in education professional testing systems so that they can develop from the stage now and to go to the next level. And they have to also identify the experts and institutions which are capable of setting examination questions both in nation as well as in international perspectives and they have to have the information and research production as well as disseminations so that the testing process can be transparent and accountable so these are their objectives now let's see what are the functions of this national testing agency first they have to identify the partner institutions they, which are universities or else schools that have a perfect infrastructure for conducting online examinations and they also have to create question banks okay the question banks which with the use of the experts both nationally as well as internationally and the next one is R&D culture so we have to have some indigenously developed testing practices so hence research and development culture must be must be inculcated so that the innovations can be reaped out okay the next one is they have to help individual colleges and universities which are in demand for such computer based examinations okay and we have to have a state of art culture of testing agencies that on par with the international standards okay then next one is we have to have reforms and training in these testing agencies hence it can be made more transparent and accountable in the testing perspective so this is about the national testing agency okay now let's move on to our next, next topic exercise rahat okay so exercise rahat is actually a disaster relief exercise which is held in rajasthan so it is it is conducted in three areas simultaneously. One is Jaipur, Kota and Alwar. So which is going to be conducted initially. A curtain riser program was already conducted on February 4 where all these programs are explained to the members involved in this exercise. Okay, So this exercise is actually a humanitarian assistance as well as a disaster relief exercise. Okay, So this is conducted by Sapta Shakti command on behalf of Indian army. So they are going to conduct this exercise which is placed which is based on Jaipur. Okay now what are they going to do? So here many participants are involving in these exercise example National Disaster Management Authority Armed Force then NR NDMRM which is Dis National Disaster Management Responsive Mechanisms okay and State Disaster Management Authority and District Level Management Authorities. So they are going to participate in this exercise Rahat. So what are their main objective for this exercise? The first one is they have to reduce the disaster risk. They have to reduce the life loss due to this disaster. So this involves both climate change adaptation as well as 
sustainable development so why they have chose this rajasthan as an excise spot now we have to know this so here this excise is conducted in three places simultaneously the first one is in jaipur so they have a table top excise so they have the initial form of excise then the on ground capability will be checked in kota and alwar where they create an earthquake like situation and they do the mitigation works and the relief works in that area so this is they are going to do in coordination with all the other agencies involved in this exercise okay now so why such exercise is needed okay first this is very important for rajasthan where it is mostly drought prone area okay also the impact of earthquake is very prone to this area hence we have to have this exercise in this area because they have konoi fault in jaisalmer and great boundary fault and jaipur de depression the same area and also the india's the highest magnitude which means 6.5 richter scale of earthquake has held in 1906 in rajasthan so hence this actually here disaster prone area okay now what are they doing what is exhalating this disaster risk first one is the urban areas which are developing in an enormous humongous amount so that becomes a important crisis the next one is population expansion so this is also another important thing that the towns or cities are expanding enormously without any planning or without any afforestation measures then So most of the Rajasthan area lies in seismic zone two, which is actually a least at least risky area. But areas like Alwar, Balmer, so they are in the seismic zone four, which is they are of high risk of earthquake. So hence this sort of exercise is essential. And now this moment of Indian and Eurasian tectonic plates also on the edge of this area, and the unplanned expansion in Himalayan regions is also making it vulnerable for the earthquakes. So hence, they are making it as a disaster preparedness measure in Rajasthan. Okay, now with this, we'll move to our next topic: the National Minorities Development and Finance Corporation. So why it is in use? First one, the West Bengal's Minority Development and Financial. so finance corporation has decided to launch a book called unsung heroes okay unsung heroes which is based on the muslim community who had fighted all the odds and become a hero in india so they are going to choose nearly 21 unsung heroes in india so this is about the news okay now let's see what is this national minorities development and finance corporation so it was started in the year 1994 it it works under the aegis of minority affairs ministry okay it is considered to be a public sector undertaking which is a company not for profit so it is a non profit organization under companies act 956 okay now what are its objectives so hence it has to have a comprehensive development on the minority so that is the main objective of it so hence they have to start economic activities among the backward sections of this notified minority so who are the more notified minorities so we have six minorities that is muslims sikhs christians with this parsis and jains so they are the six major minorities in india so we are going to develop some economic activities for the backward sections in those minority people okay so the hence we are they are going to provide concessional loans and finances for their self employment generation so that is the objective of this national minorities development and finance corporation okay now how they are giving so this has a two criteria mechanism so they divide the finance and loans into two criteria so one is below 1.2 lakh or below 1.2 lakh for urban areas and 98000 annual income groups for rural areas so that is one criteria that is below poverty line and they also have a second criteria name 6 lakhs and below which is based on the creamy layer perceptions okay so they have two criteria for financing mechanisms so they will give loans as well as advances for the minorities to develop some self help groups for themselves okay and they are also giving upgradation of technological and entrepreneurial skill for developing them into entrepreneurs so hence self help groups women organizations are actually promoted in these financial corporation okay now they also have apex organization for coordinating and monitoring all the works which are delegated to this minority affairs ministry so they look after the welfare of this minorities and they also looks after the government policies either which is giving back to these minorities or not so they actually monitor as well as review the policies given by government which is based for the welfare of minorities so what are all the 
schemes they are doing. So first one is they give term loans for the minorities based on agriculture or any other occupations and also they give educational loan schemes. It is based on for, for, for both official foreign education as well as in Indian education. Then microfinancing schemes for self-help groups to develop and the promote their self-help group organizations and Mahila Samriti Yojana, it is given for women to start any self-help groups and empower themselves and vocational training, market assistance schemes and skill upgradation. So these are some of the schemes undertaken by this National Minorities Development and Finance Corporation. Okay, now, so with this, we'll move to our next topic, Motor Vehicle Amendment Bill 2017. Okay, so why it is in use? The bill which is launched in 2017, actually it is passed in Lok Sabha, but it is still pending in Rajya Sabha. So what is there in news? Our International Road Federation, which is the very famous body for road safety organization, which is based in Geneva, has urged government of India to launch this, to actually pass this Motor Vehicle Amendment Bill 2017. Because in India, the road accidents are more higher. Like we have at least... 5 lakh road accidents each year of this nearly 2 lakh people die because of this road accidents so hence they urge that when this amendment bill comes into act th that will have a reform on this road safety and become a safer roads okay and moreover we are also a member of united nations brasilia declaration so that has an aim of reducing the road accidents to 50 percent within the year 2020 so hence, road safety is an important concern for India. So when this act comes to an effect, we can amend the 1988 Amendment Act, which is not up to the mark of this present need. Okay. Now, what are all the things given in this bill? First one is the safety of pedestrians and non-motorized transport, that means NMT. Okay. So for that, to include the safety of these pedestrians and non-motorized, they have demanded for some cycle tracks as well as no motor vehicle allowed areas in roads so that the pedestrian safety can be ensured. So that is the first one they have asked. And the next one is safety of children during commute. So it is essential for the children to have a seat belts while driving. Also, they have held the adult responsible if the children is not seated in a safe manner. Also, when a child is above four years, when he is driving in a bike or something, uh, two wheelers, the children above four years must have helmets based on their need. Okay, so these are the safety for children during the commute. The next one is recalling of vehicles. So once the vehicle gets older or when it has become polluting much, so Government, the regulating agency has the right to recall the vehicles. So this is the second, third provisions. Next, stringent provisions for faulty designs. So, so this stays with the dealer or the seller who is providing this, this vehicle. So one is that when they have provided some faulty machines or faulty mechanisms in the vehicles, so the dealer are responsible for recalling those vehicles. Otherwise, they will be punished for more than 5 lakhs or 3 years of imprisonment. So that is the stringent punishment given for the sellers. The next one is transparent, centralized and efficient driver licensing system. Now, what they had done is the education qualification for getting this license are actually omitted in this bill and also the one year need for the learner's license are also omitted. So the regulating agency can check the efficiency of the driver and they can give the license for the for the rider. Okay. Now, what are the other things they have given? Now, the registration of new motor vehicles can be done by the vehicle dealer itself. They must have a distinctive type of registration type. Okay. The next one is for drink, drunken driving, over speeding, they have punishments like the year on year punishments will be increasing. So it is not a stable punishments. Okay. Once if it is given thousand for this year, the government has the right to increase it to two thousand or three thousand the next year. So hence, so these are made as a stringent punishment and can be increased year on year. Then now, they have defined the definition for dangerous driving. So the dangerous driving definition is once they cross, once they violate the red light or they does not obey the stop sign or else when they pass a, or overtake a passenger which is of unsafe manner that is considered to be a dangerous driving. Also, handling the communication devices while driving like cell phones or other electronic medium is also considered to be as dangerous driving. So, for dangerous driving, the stringent punishment also involves like year-on-year -year punishment increase. Okay. Now, the bill also for the National Road Safety Board, okay, the National Road Safety Board, that will provide all the regulations for this 
bills and also the punishments and we must have a national transportation policy to ensure safer roads and the policies which are actually implemented to the ground level so hence this national transportation policy will act as a driving mechanism for ensuring the road safety and reducing the fatalities in road accidents and they have also given other measures like compensations for the injuries caused or death caused by this accident due to the hit and run cases so when it is of injuries the punishment or compensation rate is about 50000 or more when it is a death due to hit and run it is more than 2 lakh rupees so that is the compensation fix for the hit and run cases so these are given in the motor vehicle amendment bill 2017 which is waiting for the passage in rajya sabha and getting president's assent so this is about this motor vehicle amendment bill 2017 okay so with this we are moving to our main topic india and tourism so why this is important okay so there was a meeting of asia asian and india meeting which is seventh meeting which is held in vietnam so indian culture minister has co-chaired with the vietnam culture minister in this asian and india summit okay so here they have talked about the strengthened tourism performances in the 2018 year between asian and india so they have stressed that there was an increase of 7.4 percentage of tourism previous year compared to 2017 so that is about the good news about this india and tourism measure now what are the other steps have they have taken so we have appreciated the asian india informal breakfast summit which is held in 2018 in singapore which also strengthened the tourism initiative between asian and india okay now india has stressed for a launch of Asian India Tourism Cooperation Year in the 2018 summit. So they have accepted for India Tourism Cooperation Year 2019. So this year is considered to be Asian India Tourism Cooperation Year. So according to that, our Ministry of Tourism has also started preparing a calendar which ranges the activities and festivals of India as well as the Asian countries. Okay. Then what are all the other good news about this industry, industry of tourism? Now in the budget, they have allocated rupees 2189.22 crores in the budget so which is actually more than the 2018-19 budget amount so hence the tourism allocation is getting a bit higher okay now we have also organized this Bharat per festival okay which was held from 26 to 31st of january 2019 by ministry of tourism okay so this had seen a participation of wide varieties of participants which showed the cultural uniqueness of india okay then some of the facts given in the budget like the foreign tourist arrivals had actually increased in 2018-19 which is up to 5.2 percent compared to 2017 and also the e-tourist visa has seen an huge growth of 39.6 percent so this is because of this to, uh, this visa at arrival or e-tourist visa mechanism that has increased the tourist arrival to India and also made India as the largest destination for tourism in South Asia. Okay, then what are the other measures? So we had seen that USA topped the tourist arrival in India followed by Bangladesh. So these two are the countries which topped the chart of foreign tourist arrivals to India. Okay, then the tax exemption given in this budget has actually increased the disposable income of middle income groups so that they'll have the independency of of planning for a travel or tourism spend that can also increase the income of tourism industries okay and in the budget they have said that opening of 100 plus airports and further infrastructure development for tourism so that actually will have a tourism development in tier 2 and tier 3 cities so that also increases the income of tourism okay now what are the other things the tourism sector last year had grown for 19 percentage okay it is actually more than the previous year's account okay and we are considered to be the third largest tourism destination area according to world travel and tourism councils so these are about the good news and here the 87 percentage of tourism is contributed by domestic tourism and only 13 percent is contributed by the foreign tourists. So these are the basic facts and data regarding this tourism industries in the past 2018. Okay. Now, what are the advantage for tourism in India? The first one is we have a huge scenic beauty, the nature and all the things are so much good. And we have a birthplace of various religions, like Hinduism, Buddhism and Jainism that actually attracts the tourism based on religion. And we have 
the domestic tourists that means the population in india is too high for having so much of tourism from domestic industries that rather than foreign tourists okay now what are the initiative taken by government of india for developing the tourism first one is udan scheme okay that aircraft airport scheme and the next one is eastern peripheral highway so that actually have a connectivity for the northeastern area as well as the eastern india which is still unexploited okay the next one is swadesh darshan scheme and adopt a heritage scheme and project prasad scheme so these are some of the schemes which actually developed tourism industry in 2018 then easier visa process like e visas and visa at arrival has actually developed because india has increased the visa at arrival from 9 airports to 26 airports so that actually eased the tourists coming from foreign the next one is development of tourism infrastructure so in 2018 17 there was a huge development in tourism infrastructure like basic facilities giving like the eco log huts craft villages toilets for for this tourists so that has also attracted the tourists from various corners of world okay then we have an advantage of niche tourism which means the medical tourism adventure tourism cuisine tourism so religious tourism so this niche tourism has also attracted so many tourists to india okay so these are the advantages of tourism industry in india now what are the backlogs in tourism the so first one is the garments red tapeism okay the process for visa clearances as well as the bureaucratic negligence bureaucratic fatigue has actually backlogged this tourism industries and the infrastructure problems which means there is less access to the rural areas or remote areas as well as they don't have a good sanitary areas for the tourists that the resident areas are not safe for the tourists so this infrastructure problems is also a backlog then there is a lack of skilled workers okay which means the most of the guides in india they are not aware of the historical perspectives so this what the tourists feel is they are giving the same information which is given in google so they don't have any skill regarding the area they don't have a perfect knowledge about the area so that is also an important reason the next one is pervasive security threat so mostly this foreign peoples are harassed so much and they are also having the security threats of going to a so to an abandoned area or leaving the places after 6 o'clock so these are some of the security threats faced by the tourists and the violence crime against foreign women so that has increased a lot and there was a long dip in for foreign women coming to india after this nirbhaya case and other sexual victim cases which is coming into limelight these days and threat of terrorism to tourists so the best example is this mumbai attack which was which was targeted on luxury hotels and the main tourist area in that nearly 21 foreign tourists have died in this 2008 bomb attack in mumbai so hence these are also the backlogs for indian tourism okay then what are the other things we don't have a proper policy for tourists coming into india and we don't have a single window clearances for this foreign tourists coming into india so we must have a strong public private partnerships which is not available in india the next one is lack of circuits for a huge india like huge country like india the only known circuit is the golden quadrilateral so we don't have much of the circuits to name in international arena so hence the circuits must be increased like golden quadrilateral diamond quadrilateral that must be made popular in india also in outside world then inaccessible areas most of the indian places are inaccessible the only famous tourist sites are like taj mahal qutub minar so these are the basic basic tourist sites foreign tourists are visiting so the inaccessible areas also a problem for tourism okay now what are all the things we can do so first turn tourism into a business profession so hence the tourism can be made as a professional one that can provide the skillful employees for guiding the tourists and now then we must have easier and safer access to basic facilities so that the women tourists can also come out for visiting india okay then india is known for holidays and religion so hence we must have some cultural holiday packages with concessions so that the foreign tourists as well as domestic tourists will have a very nice period for this cultural holiday packages then develop global villages which means for example stay a week with kashi tribes stay a week with this naga tribes so that are the global villages where tourists can come and stay in indian houses and they can see the culture of india so if we develop all these side of things the tourism can increase far more and 
first properly integrate all the business related to tourism example transportation accommodations and also the sanitation measures everything must be integrated and everything must be streamlined so that the tourism industry can also see a upward growth and the niche tourism which is still unregulated so we have some medical tourism eco tourism adventure tourism which is ba mostly based on this himalayas and prison tourism but they are mostly unregulated so we must develop and promote it in the international arena like incredible india god's own country so these are some of the measures that actually attracted tourist to india so we have to make all these measures so that the tourist industries can see even more boon in the in the coming years okay so with this i conclude today's topic so please like share and subscribe to our youtube channel thank you